Welcome back to Sissy Maya. Here, we embrace true femininity. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss an update. It was supposed to be a casual hangout, just me and my best friend, James. We'd been planning it for weeks, ever since he'd found that awesome vintage dress at the thrift store. We were going to wear our finest, and maybe even hit up the local costume party at the community centre. But as I sat in his car, waiting for him to finish up at work, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of anxiety in the pit of my stomach. Not because I was nervous about the party or anything, but because, well, there was just something about James' excitement that made me feel a little uneasy. I tried to push the thought aside as I fidgeted with the hem of my borrowed skirt. It was a cute little number, black and white polka dots, and it fit me perfectly. James had been kind enough to let me borrow it, even though it was his favourite piece of clothing. But as the minutes ticked by and he still didn't show up, I couldn't help but wonder if maybe, just maybe, he'd changed his mind about letting me borrow it after all. Glancing around furtively, I reached into my purse and pulled out my phone, quickly texting him to make sure everything was okay. A few seconds later, his reply flashed onto the screen, on my way, gorgeous. Couldn't resist coming straight from work to pick you up. I felt a wave of relief wash over me, but there was still something, off about the way he'd texted me. It almost sounded, too much like a lover, rather than a best friend. I tried to shake the thought away as I waited a little longer, but the more I thought about it, the more I couldn't help but feel like there was something going on between us that I wasn't quite understanding. Maybe it was just the way he'd been acting differently lately, or maybe it was the fact that he'd been spending so much time helping me pick out clothes and makeup, it was all starting to add up in my mind, and I wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Just as I was about to text him again, I finally saw his car pulling up, the familiar rumble of its engine filling the air. As he stepped out of the car, his face beaming with excitement, I couldn't help but feel a strange mix of relief and unease. He came around to open my door, and as I took in his appearance, I knew that something was definitely different. He looked, different. Better. More confident. And that's when it hit me. James was wearing my dress. It was the first thought that pierced through the shock and confusion that had washed over me when I saw him walking towards the car. He looked incredible in it, of course. The black and white polka dots set off his olive skin perfectly, and the fitted bodice showed off his broad shoulders and defined chest. But it wasn't just that. It was the way he moved, the way he held himself. It was like he'd finally found something that made him feel truly happy truly alive. And then it hit me. I wasn't just his best friend. I was his sister. And this whole time, I'd been so focused on what he thought of me, what I thought of me, I hadn't even considered what he might have been going through. Maybe he'd been feeling the same way I had, like he didn't quite fit in with everyone else. Maybe he'd been longing to express himself in a way that he couldn't with his other friends. I took a deep breath and forced a smile. Hey, you clean up pretty good, don't you? I said, trying to sound casual. You know, if you ever want to borrow some clothes, I've got plenty of stuff you could wear. James stopped in his tracks, his eyes widening. For a moment, I thought he was going to say something. But then he just laughed and shook his head, walking around to the passenger side of the car. Thanks, sis, he said, sliding into the seat. But I think I'll just stick with this for now. And with that, he put the car into drive and we headed off to the party. As we drove, I glanced over at him out of the corner of my eye. He was looking out the window, a contented smile playing on his lips. And for the first time in a long time, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. Maybe it was because I finally understood him, or maybe it was because I finally understood myself. Either way, I knew that from now on, things were going to be different. We pulled up to the community centre and got out of the car. 
The sounds of music and laughter spilled out into the night air, and for a moment, I felt a pang of sadness. I'd always wished that I could feel as free and confident as James did right now. But then I realized something. I did feel that way. I'd just been looking in the wrong place. James took my hand and led me inside, and as we walked together towards the party, I felt a sense of belonging wash over me. I was finally part of something. Finally part of him. And for the first time in a long time, it felt like I was finally where I belonged. The music was loud and lively, and the room was filled with people laughing and dancing. We made our way through the crowd, weaving in and out of groups of friends, until we reached the center of the room. There, standing in front of a makeshift stage, was a boy who looked oddly familiar. As he began to sing, I realized with a start that it was Alex. He was performing a song he'd written himself, and the words seemed to resonate deep within me. As the song came to an end, the crowd erupted into applause, and Alex stepped off the stage, beaming with pride. He spotted us in the crowd and made his way over, his eyes lighting up when he saw James. Hey, man, you made it, he exclaimed, slapping James on the back. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to come. Of course I was gonna come, James said, returning the smile. I wouldn't miss this for the world. And with that, they embraced in a tight hug, laughing together like old friends. I looked at them, marveling at the connection they shared, the understanding that seemed to flow between them. And who's this gorgeous girl you've brought with you? Alex asked, turning his attention to me. I blushed, feeling self-conscious all of a sudden. But James just smiled and put an arm around my shoulders. This is my sister, Lily, he said proudly. She's the one who's been helping me with all this. He gestured to himself, taking in my outfit for the first time. She's the one who made me look this good. As Alex nodded in acknowledgement, I felt a surge of happiness wash over me. For once, I wasn't the one in the background, fading into the shadows. I was part of something important. Something special. And as I looked at James and Alex together, I knew that this was only the beginning. We spent the rest of the night dancing and laughing, sharing stories and making new friends. As the party wound down and people began to say their goodbyes, I found myself lingering by James' side. Thanks for bringing me, you know, I whispered, looking up at him with a smile. For letting me be a part of this. He returned my smile, wrapping an arm around my shoulders. Hey, he said softly, it's always been about you, you know that. You're my best friend, and I couldn't have done it without you. And as we stood there together, beneath the starlit sky, I knew that no matter what happened in the future, we would always have this. We would always have each other.